when people come here, the, the first words that they normally say when they come through the door is, wow, I didn't expect this to be here. How did you make this thing? So I started in 2012 with the building of a 737-800NG in a shed at home and all the neighbors wanted to fly and they started contributing to my time, which then led on to me thinking about starting this up as a business. Best way to build this Spitfire is to get the original blueprints, make the uh, component in a 3D system, a drawing system, and then develop the components to bring them out in a 3D printer and things like that, resin printing, uh, CNC machining. Everything on the instrument panel has been handmade um, because you can't get uh, the component. Well, you can get the components, but you can't get them so they work with flight simulators. So I had to make each component for flight simulation. The Spitfire Sim a reset, it takes about five minutes after a significant impact um, because it's got to reload all the scenery, reconfigure everything. You'll probably end up at the airport that you took off from. The other great thing about the Spitfire that I've got here, it does shoot. We have uh, several scenarios where you have some uh, enemy aircraft that are out to get you. So the Spitfire build has taken about two to two and a half years. The difficulty I've had is going through each specific component, having to draw it up and then make it. So that's where at some points through the build, I was definitely questioning my decision to build it. So I'm just a nutter engineer, really, that uh, I can't be doing nothing. So I've got to do something. Um, I have high functioning autism and uh, that means don't leave me alone, otherwise I'll start making something or taking something apart.